Righto. The Lalika is going back together as you can see. Little things like um, the transmission dipstick. And whilst it doesn't seem like much, it's not the easiest one to put in. Tidied up the wiring that went under the radiator and secured it all so it doesn't rub. The past air pump was changed and the alternator was changed. And this is why the past air pump was changed. And we've still yet to flush the system and get all that, what looks like engine oil, but it's not out of the system. Inside the wiring's looking a bit tidier. And I've got a, a set of relays and fuses to pop into that now. And hopefully today we'll have that up and going. And that's with it diluted. And this needs, probably needs a clean too, funnily enough. But that's okay. Let's, let's get it flushing. Careful of the... Wait, wait. Yes. Oh, good. So I put that in there. I'm going to hold it like this so I can... Spray. I'm all captured. I'm all cack-handed. And I'll pull that in there. Go. Ready? Yep. Turned off. <laughs> we got through the red stuff. I got rid of the black. Nuts. And I got to red. There's definitely lots of sucking noises. <laughs> Struggling. And now it idles really nice. <laughs> you know that engine breed is wrong, but Take that air for it. Oh, that's actually been put in there. <laughs> well, that's how that something. Listen to it. You don't like that. Take that off again. Just hold it up against it. That's a restriction, eh? That's a big restriction. Like, it makes it run hard. Take it off again. I don't think this, this hose helps. Nah, no, so that definitely needs to sort out. We'll just, we'll just do that. There you go. And I'll just take... Okay, that can go back in the back because that isn't going to work, that intake. <laughs> Here, I'll take the air filter too. Is that little piece? So that was never going to work. That was just going to slide right down. Maybe you just want to do power. It's a sweetheart again. <laughs> what? Not enough exhaust either. Yeah. Not enough ex shit. Full, of, full of carbon in the exhaust? Yeah. yeah. Blocked exhaust and intake too restrictive. I think you've blown all the crap out of it. Oh. Thanks, on me. Go on to your leg. That was all good.
give it, give it a bit of a no I, I'm just just sandblasted my hand <laughs> my, my head's definitely got got a tingly feel now right yeah. This is the first drive of the Delica. It's possibly a little bit dark out here tonight. But as you saw with the airbox, what we've got here, we've got the big bog. It's nice to have it driving though. Hopefully that gave me four wheel drive. Got some floppy floppy in the gear shifter so it doesn't select gears properly. And I've got a AT light flashing. But that's progress nonetheless. I don't think you can actually see me. It's a lovely night. Look at that lovely night. And this one's been a little bit of a challenge today. I wanted to be a little bit further ahead. But it wouldn't start. And it had the, no, I'm completely dead, don't want to start. And I think I know why this one was sold out of Japan, because it had intermittent non-starting problems. I flicked another ECU in it, and ta-da, it is working again. But of course it took me time to diagnose. It's been a big day. I've given the Delica a drive, and it drove initially, the AT light was flashing. So I got in and traced a few connections. I had communication with the scan tool, so that made it much easier. So I was able to, to pinpoint the connector that wasn't quite pushed home. Connectors on it, as per normal, are getting a little bit aged and, and they just needed that little bit more just to seat it all the way home. And that fixed the, the solenoid problems. So that was a, a big move forward. And it was bringing up a throttle position sensor code. Um, so we've, well, I've, I've cleared the code. I've checked the pin to the ECU and checked the voltage directly into the back of that ECU. And it's telling me it's got 0.6 of a volt at idle and it climbs up to about 3.7 through the range. And that might actually be a problem. That, that 3.7 may not be enough for it to kick down for full throttle. Mitzi's really like that 4.5 volts. And that, that's a bit more of a clue for, for Toyotas as well because they often only read like 80% at full throttle, like that one does. So that may need a bit of a sword out or a box to make it better. I've since, I've done that and checked it. I've checked the live data with the ECU. And I think it might just be my scan tool not picking up so nicely because it's giving me funny readings, but the voltage at the pin is correct. Doesn't flash up any codes and it drives quite well. And it's clicking through the gears, as I'd expect. We're also fighting with an exhaust that's restrictive, an intake that's not right, it's, it's too long, it's a big, long bit, and all the perforations I think are causing me problems there. The air bleed is incorrect, and we've got big tyres, so the transmission doesn't know where it is. So it's a bit gutless. But it's a big step forward on getting this correct. Um, and I've seen this with big wheels. It stuffs up the transmission control. I might have a few ideas to sort it, so fingers crossed I can get that done. But in general, a really successful day. So I'll keep working. No, I'm not. I'm going to call it quits for the day and uh, have a bit of a break for a couple of days and we'll be back next week to finish this off and get it sorted. The fuel trims on the auction sensors were all up the crapper so it's getting some new ones. You'll see Genuine Denso. I've changed this one. That was pretty easy to get to. Uh, the other side not not so much we're going to try the airflow meter in close so that we can recommend to the customer to change it and what is actually going to work and we're going to make some gauges inside work 
we have a Delica. It's nearly ready to go back to the customer. The intake like this made a good power difference. Got the ECU going in up there. The TCU's down there. With the TCU, I'm getting uneven readings when I plug my scan to one. These Mitsubishi um, ECUs and, and TCU transmission control units uh, suffer just like the Lexus ones from just age. And the capacitors get a bit old and tired, a little bit of corrosion, poor joints, and they give some trouble. And this one works most of the time, and I've got other problems. That, oh, I've got other problems that need to be sorted first, and we always fix the things we know. The left hand auction sensor, one on this side, it's seized and nipped in the hole, so the exhaust manifold's gonna have to come out. And the VSV for the AVIS. I'd been driving it and checking it, and my man over here said, don't these have a flappy thing? It was on my list to check. And sure enough, it's not functioning correctly. So that needs to be done as well. I'm actually going to put the dash back together. It's going back to the customer. He's going to do some more work on it and continue with the progress. But it does actually drive. So we'll go for a drive in a little bit. I'll show you what I've got. That heater box goes in really, really well. It's uh, quite like this one. The ECU's tucked up, uh, up in there. And it actually fits really nicely as well. Heater linkages all clear. And there's this little relay and fuses here. And OBD2 port right there like that. Easy as. This is the Delica starting. First start in the morning. It's not bad at all. No AT warning light. The glow light is the check engine light and you'll see it's not on. It is when it's... I turn it off. So we have a glow light and the AT light. Of course an oil light. Beauty. Gauges up on the dash. They are functioning correctly. It's not showing water temp because it's cold. I just want to reiterate about the ECT or the TCU as it's known in a Mitsubishi. So here I've got my throttle position voltage. So it's really important that it gets that voltage correct. I didn't remove the annoying Beeper. It's actually driving pretty well. Ticks along here. This is in drive, so it's selecting its own gears. I don't want to actually drive it at too much because there's a little bit of rubbing. The customer's got a bit of time sorting out the wheels and rubbing. At this point, oh, there's a cow out. That's a, that's a problem. Test driving my car and there is a cow out. Well, it's actually a bull. A little bit of rubbing. Balls in the paddock. Balls in the paddock. Uh, all by the house. Yeah, you're in the wrong place, buddy. Go back in your paddock. A as you can see, they're well used to noisy vehicles around the place. He's just going to walk past me. No problem. So I'm just going to sort this bull out and then we will get back to our test drive. Papa dog, come on, come on. You like moving cows. Good girl. So with this, 
We're locking in first gear. It's, there it goes quite well with the exhaust off and with the air filter shortened right up. And I think what I'm going to do in a moment is uh, pop the exhaust back on just to show the difference. It's probably a bit loud to let the man take it like this. I'm not sure he'd uh, be happy driving it on the trailer, but it does prove a point. Poppy, stay there, stay. So we've managed to work our way through and solve the power issues with these couple of modifications. Take the exhaust off and shorten the intake. And you can hear there, it was going quite well. So of course the AVIS isn't working yet. So when that comes in, we're gonna get more bottom end and it's gonna go heaps nicer. I don't know, actually putting the exhaust on, it does go very well like this so I want the customer to see how it goes well. This is the TPS span here. So we get it up to 4.9, 4.09. And I'd like an extra 0.4 of a volt, but that, that is not too bad. Don't think the leakers are meant to be that fast. What's your problem? Who needs brakes? We're only engaged to make it go. <laughs> we, we weren't involved in making it slow. We were making it go. Well, it goes. What's it going to go like when it's got an AVIS? Uh, a lot better, I think. Yeah, a lot better. Yeah, yeah a lot better. <laughs> it's a bit, bit boggy down low, but once it gets up and moving, mm. it gets all right now. Yeah. I put that... It was the other day. Yeah. Still got the auction sensor to do? Yeah. I'll put some exhaust on it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to Whisper Jet. And it's not just that, it's quiet now. We've definitely lost some power there. But it's quiet, very, really quiet. I was a little disappointed because I couldn't get the taco going. And you can see, it just, it just decides just to stay there. Yeah. There were signs that someone had been at this taco before me. But that probably just needs a repair. We'll get that sorted another day. I'm actually pretty happy now. Um, I did have a, a really slight incident that I had to apologize to the customer. Uh, I managed to break the windscreen, which I'm really sorry about. I really hate when I make a mistake, but at least it was just a windscreen and I sorted it out with them. This is actually gonna be a pretty cool truck. It's been a long haul for me and uh, there've been lots of challenges and bits and pieces but I'm actually really, really happy with the result now I've got it to this point. So that's really positive. It's nice to get to this point. I hope the customer's gonna be happy with it too and he'll sort the other bits and pieces out. He's got a bit, quite a haul to go. Exhaust, or auction sensors and exhausts and bits and pieces. Put the front back together nicely, sort the fans. But it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a really cool truck. So I'm, I'm really, really happy. Where's my dog?
nowhere near as exciting with an exhaust on it. That is super quiet. Like I'd say it's lost. Well, it's lost a heap, top end, eh? Way slower. And bottom end. And bottom end. Well, bottom end, it's got no AVIs. It's gonna, it's gonna go good when it's done though. Everything's sorted, it's gonna be it's gonna be a beast. I don't think a Delica is meant to be that fast. No. Brakes, big wheels to slow it down, big um stop the rubbing. Yeah. Right. I'll give it another wash, eh? Seeing seeing we've just made it dirty. And then the customer will turn up and he's gonna make it dirty. Yeah. going to be a little bit of a job for you, hey? Yeah. I see that your other one, quite a lot smaller on the wheels, on the tyres. Yes, it's 31s. Yep. 33s on this. So this has got 33s, right? Yeah. So down low, yep. it does lack a little bit. But once you get up and moving, it actually gets along really well. Um, it doesn't kick down quite as like I like when it, the exhaust is like this. Yep. But I can whip the exhaust off if you want, and you can oh, have a proper right. drive, but it drives really well. You saw how black the trans fluid, other uh, power steer fluid was, eh? Oh yeah, I, when I drained the last lot out, uh, it was like a potential oil on it. Yeah, it's just disgusting, but I got that, I actually, I got that on video as well. Huh? It actually shows the, the crack coming out, so that's real cool. So you got all your sensors. Yep. So that, that'll make everything's there to do that. Intake manifold, yeah, I've, I've, I've probably should do a video on testing that solenoid when you've got the manifold off because it's real simple I forget some of that basic stuff that I just do yep. I just do it it's normal you had the aircon off this so you've got a little bit of, I can smell aircon gas can you smell the aircon gas yeah, I can yeah. um the aircon core, um, core was shock a block oh, just filthy. absolutely filthy so we got it all clean there too so that's all been cleaned. Um, so that was that's spotless, and I've given, I gave the fan a bit of a blowout as well to get some of the gunk and shit off that as well. Oh, the tanker! What are we doing? Two thousand at the moment. Yeah. Sitting at two thousand all the time. Well, it, it, it was it was down, but it came up this morning when I put it back in because actually when I pushed the needle, it, you put it wherever you want, and there was a repair sticker on the side. Speedo is. I was doing like with my GPS and it was reading 30 and I think we were doing 32. Yeah, that's so are the speedos well out on these normally? How close is your one? Oh that's out by about 4 or 5k as well. And of course you're going to get more bottom end once we get it up and once you get your AVIS. Yes. That'll give you a lot more bottom end and that trans will work. It doesn't kick down like it's like I would like it when it starts loading like this to kick down. But I'll work on a box generally. But if you pull it back too, if you just drop it back in a second, you'll feel how much nicer it goes. That's better, eh? That's better. I think on the open road you're gonna find it real nice cruising. But you may need to at the point just every now and again you want to just overdrive button or drop it back a second. Yep. Four drive seems to be working just fine. There it goes. Oh, yeah. Four drive goes in. You see the diff lock too, so. 
You've got the wiggly stick. Did you want to not have a wiggly stick? No, it's up and down. Yours is a straight up and down. Yeah. So this is, you know, I struggled a little bit with the wiggly, with the, the, the interlocks there. to be clipping in and out for me but I didn't know them. There, there it is there so you slow right down. So that's, so that's working like should I? Yeah well, it should anything between 0 and 80 kilometers an hour yep. you should be able to clip it in and out of um, four yep. drive and then it's a full stop to put it into um, diff lock or uh, low ratio. Cool. That one basically what it you do see the loom all behind the top of the engine loom is all being stripped out. So the only thing that goes across there now, oh there's the warning lights for the indicators, uh, for the booster over that side, yep. and then some one of the alternator wires runs over there. The alternator actually plugs in down that side on the front corner, and then so the around to the alternator, in behind the radiator we tidied all the wiring in there, because it was going to rub on the alternator. Then this loom was all stripped out, there's two fans, uh, fan relays, and they're located just on the engine bay over here. I'll show you them. And then under here's your fuel pump relay and your ECU relay, your main gear fire relays down just on that kick panel. Yep. Both ports still torque. Okay. This, the trans ECU, whilst I've been working on it, every now and then it defaulted. I mean, I'm not going to change gears, but I had my test gear on it. Yep. And it hasn't played up today or yesterday at all been just fine. Okay. Personally I think I'll probably get it rebuilt and it's giving me funny readings on the TPS but it's functioning like it should. Yep. And the oil temp sensor, it was saying 149 degrees yeah. for long. the trans but it's working like it should so you know, I, I really need the other, need the other stuff sorted yep. to continue. You know, it's not going to change gear properly without the, the bottom end torque. You speed more torque through this transmission yep. and the transmission works better. Yes. So we had the exhaust off this morning and it was shifting gear much nicer. And power wise, I think you probably, that, that top end power, you really notice it with the exhaust unbolted. Yep. Not just, it's not just noisier, it definitely goes better. And yeah, um, Jason got the, 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 the sandblasted leg Oh yes, from the uh, from all the crap coming out of it, and I got my head. It was all sandblasted as well. How does it compare in power to the other one? Oh, fast. The old dirty old diesel. Yeah. Yeah, the old diesel is a bit gutless now. So what's the plan? Are you gonna, is this going to be the main one, or is this going to be the weekend one? Uh, no, this will be my daily. This is going to be your daily. Yeah. Yep. Hold on. Uh, no, it'll be uh, a lot of the parts are going to be on the Okay. Uh, front wheel uh, windage. Oh, yep. Uh, store cook and toy. Right. I ran through checking the heater as much as I could. Yep. Um, and it seemed to be putting air to where it's meant to put it, putting air. Yep. Yep. I think it's yeah, feel heat coming out of the top. I'm not sure. If was the cooling system in this really yucky when you pulled it apart? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you might want to put a, a bit more of a flush yep. through there, through that heater, because that doesn't feel like it's blowing like it should. Great, eh? Oh, probably taking a bit of water Yeah. Um, so that's your fan switch? Oh, yes. Yeah. So that just plugs into the... when you put it in? Yes. Okay. And then relays are over there for the fans. And if you feed a positive into this blue wire... Yes. That's what we think. I would diode it into that blue wire. These fans will also work when the air conditioning's on, if you wanted it to. Okay. You've got the ones on the front, yep. but 
you could put them over there through that one if you wanted. And then this is cut it down once you put it in place. Yep. The other one was hard as rock. Yes. So once the front's on, that can go in. Um, that's heat proof stuff. Oh yes, thank you. And Jace, this one was seized. Yep. Or one of them was seized. Jason got that off. And we talked to you about that. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. And break it and then go, oh. But that, that pump is just fine for that for this job. Through here, this is where the alternator, this wiring here has been changed a little bit. Tucked up under there, so it's okay. been zip tied up in there so it wouldn't rub. Yep. And you see this loom, there's the engine looms up under here. So through right along there. Yep. Okay, the, the, that's the, the old engine loom, the, the Delica loom goes along the, the top. Yep. And then the engine loom is here. Oh, yep, yep. Okay, so it gets in the middle of the cabin. So it goes up under the, in behind the heater. Yep. And there's a little loop in there where it's tucked in, up on the vents, into the ECU. That, because this is effectively wired like a manual, there's a little control box in there that replace the auto signal. Yep. That's it, it's not one of those. They're tucked up and down, okay? So that's done. It, I took out about, Two litres of fluid, and I put back in about six litres of fluid in the cooling system. So that's your bleeder. Okay. So basically, what I did is I actually had that off, yep. that off, and pulled it till it started coming out of there, and then I took this one off and continued topping until it came out of there. Yep. Going in, job done. Right. Big springs in that one. Yes. So that'll lift it. Does it lift it at all? Two inches yep. and you've got two inch bases for the front yes. so that lifts it so that should hopefully get rid of all the rub well, yep. most of the rubbing yeah because those wheels are these tires are a lot bigger than those ones yeah okay yeah so ben in australia's got those as well yes he's uh well, he's still like a garage so he's, he's got everything he's got lots of shit yeah yep. cool all right you can get strapped on and yeah. go home have your big drive home <laughs> Six hours, it's two o'clock now, that's eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it is running, very quiet. <laughs>